Amanda McDonald. Juicy Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop, girl. I have got the infamous Shane Lamas here. The Juicy Scoopers have been dying for you to come. Um, we're going to get your whole life story. I, I cannot. Yeah. I have so many questions for you. Oh, Thank you for driving sure. all the way from uh, the Newport Beach area. It's a haul and a half, but I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for having me. This is this is awesome. Yes. This is like totally professional and like <laughs> my deal. It's not some garage, you know, with throwing headphones and talk to so, Heather. <laughs> I want to just sort of explain a little bit how these interviews came about since I yes, recently please. had your soon to be ex-husband on. So I came across to you like a few months ago and I reached out to you because I was like, oh my God, I just was on The Bachelorette and I remember you being, what 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 Bachelorette, you were very early on so, in The Bachelorette franchise. Yes, uh, it was season 11, I believe. Um, Matt Grant and- um, Wait, you were the 11th Bachelorette though? No, 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 season. Right, but The Bachelorette thing had just begun? Or? Oh, right, but I was never Bachelorette. Oh, you were just never Bachelorette. Bachelor. Oh, you just won the thing. Yeah, I won. Oh, that's why I, I thought... I we could say that, you know. It is okay, so I want to talk about that. So I just, like, reached out to you, and I was like, I like I love getting, like, I had this girl, um, Megan, on that was Who Wants to Marry a Millionaire, Who Wants to wear, Marry Megan, and she had, like, a crazy story, and I, I was like, oh, that, I'm, you know, been watching reality shows, and I remember right. your she story. she looks like she has a juicy story. Exactly. Let's get her on. So I write to you, <laughs> and then later on, I see you guys are getting, or right around then, I see you're getting divorced, and at first it seems great. You know, well, after 11 years, you know, yeah. we're going to be best mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. We're going to co-parent, mm -hmm. you know, all that yeah, bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was like, all right. Yeah. Then I saw it wasn't getting so nice. And then I kind of forgot about it. And then Nick reached out to me and I remembered him from the dirty. And I was like, ooh, I bet he's got some Britney Spears kind totally. of like old, like what I like to call Juicy Scoop history. Right, right. So then. Absolutely. So then he comes on and then I realize, oh. This he might be about the divorce. <laughs> so then I reach out to you and I say, your husband's coming on and I still want to give, I want to still have you. I'm not like blowing. Right, right. And then when he came on, I said, full disclosure, Nick, told him this whole story. Right. And he goes, okay, fine. Yeah. So, you know, and so then we made a plan for you to come last week. Yes. You let me know a couple days before that you took your daughter to Texas and you got very sick that you didn't have COVID, but you got sick. And I just wanted people to know that that was not you flaking. Yes, that you no, were sick. no, no, absolutely. And then we immediately made a plan for the following week, it which is today. It played very well into my ex-husband's hands, let's just say yes. that, where he was then able to call me out on it. But, you know, that's story in my life. Yes. So, but you are here. Yes, You're of not, course. you were not late. You, you, I was you, dying you, in my bed, actually. And, I mean, I... Honestly, I thought I had COVID. Yeah. You know, I mean, but I wasn't going to say I had COVID unless I knew I had COVID. Right. But I'm like, I have fucking COVID. Yeah. And I was dying, like literally dying. So when I tested and I was negative, I was like, what? You know, but I was still sick. They're like, you have one of the other million viruses that are out there. That still exist. there's a ton of them. Yeah. Like, it's not just COVID, you know? Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. You know, you're right. It was it was very odd. It was probably a mix of exhaustion and stress. Travel and, yeah, everything you've been and going like, through. And, like, my whole life is just, like... So I want to get to your whole you life know. because you have a very juicy life. Okay, so your dad is Lorenzo Lamas. Now, I... Was he... Wasn't he... What is he... What was he most famous for? Was he in Greece too? What was he in? Okay, so he's most famous for, first of all, his parents, which is Arlene Dahl, my grandmother, okay. and Fernando Lamas, which is my grandfather. So they, of their day, this is like, my grandmother actually is the last living woman of that old Hollywood era. Like, Where they would get like contracts. contracts and, with MGM yes. and, like and what Like a Marilyn Monroe. You. Right. Yes. And so um, my grandfather cheated on my grandmother with Esther Williams, who also was a major star and who was the queen of synchronized swimming yes who really started it all absolutely yes. i mean just gorgeous stunning and did all these like big production so, swimming ch movies right yeah. so you don't want to talk about esther in front of my grandmother but oh, really okay so my grandmother then moved to new york and esther and fernando lived here in beverly hills where my dad grew up 
And did they ever, so did they marry? They married, yes. Okay. And then my grandfather. And, but your dad was your, the grandmother, the first, he wasn't Esther. So Esther was his stepmom. Yes. Got it, got it. Okay. Right. So Lorenzo's S- mom, stepmom was Esther Williams. Right. Okay. So he grew up in this, so he grew up obviously in this world. In Southern California. You know. Yeah, in LA, and, Hollywood. And, uh, you know, as a, as a star's son. And my grandfather was probably the biggest name in his day. I mean, he's on Johnny Carson and I watched it the other day on YouTube for the first time and I was dying. Like my grandfather, you know, he's Spanish and he's very stern. He has this accent. Johnny goes, how are you, Fernando? And he goes, I'm not great. I'm not great. And and Johnny goes, well, you look fabulous. He goes, I guess it's, you know, better to look good than to feel good. And <laughs> My my grandfather just has these coin phrases that are just from that time. Yeah. It's just not he he was on I Love Lucy as himself. Fernando oh my God, Lamas. I love that. And you know Lucy, she's just obsessed with the actor Fernando. Yes. I mean, it's just so it just goes back the history and the roots. And my father told my grandfather, "I want to be an actor," and he goes, "Well, do a scene for me." And um, he did a scene, and he said, okay, good luck, you know. And so my dad did some, uh, what do you call it, you know, going into one of the acting, many acting classes or schools here. Yeah. And started studying, and his first role was Grease. And it was between him and John Travolta for the main role, okay? And they ended up going with John, clearly. Yeah. But they gave my dad, who is like 18 years old, a <gasps> little, a little part, right, where he is this. Um, I don't even think he has he's, a he's line. The, but he's the jock. He's who's the running. jock. That's who right. steps in the you know helmet and who. Um, I'm. Her name is. San- Sandy. Sandy is kind of like you know eyeing when her and Johnny were. When he's you know, when you Johnny's could... throwing her off, Lorenzo right. is like the clean cut guy, right. and Johnny's and the greaser. He had to dye yeah. his hair blonde because he looked so much like John that they oh. didn't want, you know. So yes. My dad. That was his first big, huge. Obviously, I can't Break. believe my dad yeah. wasn't greased. To be honest, like yeah. that just like blows my mind. But. Um, and then from there, he kind of just took roles, and uh, then he he did Falcon Crest, which is a huge oh, right. soap opera back in the that day. That was like the Dallas type of soap right. opera. So yeah, that, that was, was it. what kicked him off. And then from there, he did Renegade, and Renegade ran for, gosh, I don't, 10, 12 years, pretty much my whole childhood. When I would come see my dad, it would be on the set of Renegade out here. So I grew up, you know, set, going to hair and makeup, and them doing, you know, just whatever. And how long and, was your dad married to your mom? Because I know he's engaged to his, is it his sixth wife? I, it's like his probably 20th, maybe 30th wife. Engagement? No, or no. just kidding. But, but it is his, it At is his point, actual. At this point, I've even, like, kind of just, like, lost track. whatever, dad, Because didn't two of the women have the exact same name as well? Shauna and Shauna, yeah. We call them Shauna 1 and Shauna 2. But they're actually Shauna Wife 4 and Shauna Wife 5, yes. right? Okay. So my dad was actually married before my mom okay. for a short period of no time. No kids? Or... No okay. kids. I don't even know what her... her name was, Victoria. Okay. And then that's all I know of her. So then my dad marries my mother, who was his publicist, okay? Oh, nice. So my mom worked for PMK for oh, years. Oh, PMK. And she was engaged to Kurt Russell, my mother. Oh, okay. And so uh, she was going to marry Kurt. And my dad, just like he does with all these other women, just comes in like, like he's like the man on the white horse. Like he's just so utterly romantic and charming. He sweeps these women off of their feet. And so my mom starts to fall in love with my father. Well, she's still dating Kurt. Yeah, but engaged. Kurt, but Kurt has not fallen, has no. not dated Goldie. So Goldie is in the picture, but <gasps> Goldie is the one trying to get Kurt and trying to get my mother fired. You know what I mean? So <sighs> Goldie's always had an eye for Kurt. Like, she swooped in right when, you know, she could and, and took him. But my mom will tell you, if she was still with us, that that was her biggest regret was leaving her i mean because at the end of the day my 
father, you know, is a playboy. And, and Kurt's turned out to be a pretty a great, great guy, right? Great, pretty great, great, great partner great and father and stepfather. And, and she and... swears that he is not married Goldie because he is still in love with her. Oh. But, I mean. Yes. So. So, wait. We're in this, because I'm trying to think of time. You've obviously seen the movie. You've seen, Go- have you seen Overboard? Yes, Okay, of course. it's like my favorite movie. Right, absolutely. So, so that. Were they together during that movie, or is that where they fell in love? I think they were together oh, at okay. that point. Because okay. I want to say that they were together. That would have came... been like mid to late 80s, I think. Yeah, yeah. it was right around that point. I oh, think wow. they, yes, okay. that is kind of fun. That's, I should look that up. I'm not yeah. quite sure, but I think it was but right. the timeline. And they're great. I mean, those two obviously are like two peas in a pod. I mean, they're just an adorable couple, even right. till this day i mean you look at that you could you like, you could have been sisters or you know, half sisters with uh, or stepsisters right. with um kate hudson but i know and then my, <laughs> i go well mother i wouldn't be here She's right like, exactly oh, you would be here you just would look different like, yeah i don't want to look different yeah like, what if, like you know what i mean it's almost like i'm offended that you, right you're right but so that would be her it's huge always, mistake it's always so funny to think about that because i remember my mom was like engage this guy before my dad too and so I, yeah. I would be like oh what would that have been like if you would have married him you know and I remember one time I was telling my son about this really rich guy I dated and how we met at the you know at this restaurant in the hotel oh Trader Trader Vic's how we met oh, there yes. we're driving around well, Beverly Hills and I'm telling him my about fa- him and he my goes, grandmother's favorite he goes restaurant. Why did you marry him? <laughs> He's like, we'd be living in Beverly Hills now. And I'm like, Drake, but you wouldn't be you. He goes, I don't care. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> totally. And that is what I would think he would say. Like, what is wrong with you, Mom? Like, hello. Um, no, absolutely. I mean, obviously. So they get, they get married. She's always still been in love with, with Kurt. Oh, it's really? just, okay. I mean, this has been and when like. when did your mom pass? So my mom passed two years ago oh, okay um and then we'll get into that but um yeah so then so they get married so they okay, and how so many kids did they have together so besides you aj was born my brother okay and then they separated okay um because my dad started to be almost like a nick richie like my my dad so my mom was a publicist right yes. so my dad became a publicist's worst nightmare right he would be like flirting with the host, and my mom would just be like in the background, like you know what I mean, like yeah, she the host start... of the restaurant or whatever. No, of the show, oh, of the show. Or, like, you know oh, what I mean, okay. talking to like you know, because yeah. he was just my dad. Is that's just my dad? Super He's charming, yeah. Super charming, and and that, I mean, not saying Nick was like that. I'm just saying he just became a nightmare of what he would say and do. It's like no, 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 no. no. Why are you saying that? You yeah, know what yeah. I mean, like what? And so, you know, and my mom was in the Hollywood life, you know, so it's like she was immersed in that and had AJ and my dad didn't want her to work anymore. So she stops, you know, her whole career, raises AJ. So anyways, they're in a separation. They're pretty much going to get divorced. And um, my dad had a interview in New York and so that's where I happened. Just off the cusp, they just hooked up oh, one night. Because she had to, she was there. To... She was there to show AJ, you know. Oh, so she so, went. So you were a bone on it, like a, on a visitation exchange. Right, right, okay. right. Absolutely. <laughs> so then when I'm, my mom's pregnant, she's like, I'm pregnant. He didn't believe her, right? Like, yeah. that is not my daughter. Like, that's not my kid. So, but he ends up somehow holding me when I'm born in the picture. Like, there's that. My mom got that photo. Yeah. So it's like growing up, you know what I mean? So good. I always want to, good job on that one. You know, I don't know how she convinced him, like, come to the hospital at least when she's born. So anyways, he says he's going to get a hot dog, and my mom says he never returned. So when he would pick up... <laughs> Wait, hold up. He's going to get a hot, like a hospital hot dog? Like, like downstairs? Apparently, you know, by Cedars, there was hot dog carts back in the day. <laughs> I can see that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can kind of see that, too. And she's like, he went down to grab me a hot dog. That's a hot dog. <laughs> he never came back. <laughs> and she's like, that's your father. And I'm like, okay. I mean, and of course she's telling me this when I'm a grown woman, right, you know, right, like okay. I, 
I didn't know any of this, and yeah. and I don't hold it against either one of them. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like at this point, it's their story. Yeah. And so she raises me, and when my dad would come to pick up AJ, he became to he came to an age where he's like, I'm not leaving unless my sister is coming with me. And so it became. Oh, AJ would say that about you, right? Yeah. And that's so it, it became like, okay. Maybe I should, you know, do a test, and obviously I'm his. And so then that's how my father and I started our relationship. When you were about how old then? Uh, probably like one. Oh, okay, right from the so, start. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so then they divorce, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and then there's that. So they get divorced, and so then you were, but you lived with your mom here in L.A. Right. So I lived with my mom in L.A., and she remarries to my sister Dakota's dad. Okay. Who, so they have Dakota. Right. Okay. Who is just, I feel like he's like that guy, like, back in the 80s, like, the Corvette and the good, you know, like, fun guy. You know what I mean? Like, she was just going for that. Like, she just wanted to party. Like, live in that, like, young, fun Back in the day, like lifestyle. When she like, met him, because you mean. Craig is just like just a random. I mean, the stepdad Craig is kind of random. Yeah. Is what you're saying. So okay. so she kind of like married him, some off the wall guy, and then uh, the the earthquake, the big earthquake, ninety four. Okay. Yeah. So that breaks our. We're living in Woodland Hills. Here, okay. And that breaks a huge, massive window, and so they decide to move to Arizona. Okay. And my dad signs away his rights. Parental rights, yeah. And he will tell you that that's his, um, what do you call it? Biggest regret? Biggest regret. Mm -hmm. Because he signed his, it's like, well, yeah, no shit. If you're going to sign for your ex-wife to take your kids to Arizona, you're pretty much saying bye-bye, you know. But, I even feel like, and 94 wasn't that long ago, but I right. feel like, um, you know, um, even with my husband's dad was married before, he was born, you know, with his right, sex, right, right. with his mom, and and that sort of happened because people like, you know, they especially if they had a, a especially if the woman had remarried, right? And it was like, well, why complicate it? This is right. who they see as their father, right? And the dad is like, didn't know that he could actually hire an attorney and have like father's right. You rights. You are and, right. You so are it's, right. It's, Especially 20 years ago, right. like, it was definitely more common that that would happen. And he was, you know, in the midst of his career blowing up. Yeah. And, you know, he then marries Kathleen Kimmont, who was his co-star in Renegade. Okay. So, regardless of that, we moved to a little town called Air, or, um, Lake Havasu. Yes. And it was like a boating town. Yeah, and I know that's Lake Havasu. What my mom... I wonder if there's some spring breaks. Pretty fun. Oh, <sighs> But I, yeah, but I don't want to live I'm there. I'm sure I saw you out on, like, ditching high school, like, you know. Yeah. So, when we, I haven't been back in God knows when. Yeah. I don't refer to that place as home, okay. although I will say that is basically my childhood. Okay. So, boating, that type of vibe, and I had a normal, awesome childhood. Okay. Like, for instance, my mom had dinner on the table every night. I was in sports. She was involved. I mean, she divorces Craig, who's a nightmare, and remarries a doctor of the town. So they become, you know, very charitable and profitable, and they're going, you know, out and about. So, so now you're on stepdad number two, the yes. doctor, and it's it's AJ, you, and, and Dakota. Dakota. Okay. Right. And so we're now immersed into our childhood, and I'm going to school climbing trees, riding bikes. I mean, just typical, awesome childhood. I couldn't have asked for anything more. And no trauma, nothing. So, and then I would go see my father here in LA. Yeah. You know, Christmas, every other month, every summer I spent with my dad. So it was just a typical kind of childhood situation. But, you know, my dad was who he was. But that... I mean, I still live normally, you yeah. know? And so my mom then divorces the doctor because he cheats on her. Oh, who did he cheat with? Some boating So he chick? cheated with her bridesmaid. <gasps> oh, yeah. Gnarly. Tell so me then about my that. mom. Wait, hold on. So my How'd mother. How'd she find out? So, so she found out. So she found out via fax because every year. Oh, fax machines. This is so classic. So classic. So every year, Doug. 
my ste- ex stepdad, ex Doctor Doug, Doctor Doug, Doctor yeah. Hayde, whatever. Yeah, it's I Craig even, Corvette, right? It's I Lorenzo mean, Lamas, yeah. Craig Corvette, and Doctor Doug. <laughs> now Go it's Doctor Doug. So Doctor Doug goes to, you know, annual doctors' meetings, right. and, You know, conventions, what have you, in Vegas. Yes. So this year. Dr. Doug did not invite my mother. Okay. And so she was a bit suspicious. Yes. And so she, when he got home, she called the hotel and was like, hello, I'm Mrs. Hayde, and I just need you to send me over all of our hotel, you know, a bill, what have you, you know, I, whatever. Right. Because, you know, I need to have it, and I don't have it, and I just want to go over the bill and see if it's correct. So she says, as it's coming out of the fax machine, she sees massage for two, dinner for two, right? Oh, I'm getting chills thinking about it. And and then like, like as it's popping up and it's just like the most affairish, you know, like- Cliche. Absolutely. Like the hands down could not be anything more than what exactly she thought and why she was doing. So she's pulling a, so she calls all, you know, her friends and, and then she calls, I. AJ and I were in high school at the time, and we get this thing on the intercom, you know, AJ Lamas and Shane Lamas, please report to the office. And we're just looking at each other like, who died? Yeah. Like, you know, no speaking on the way home. We walk in. My mother is like, pack your bags. I am divorcing Doug. We are out of here. Literally packed up and left within three weeks. We are living here on Topanga Canyon in Woodland Hills. Okay, hold that. Okay, so now you're back in Woodland Hills. Did you ever get to say goodbye to Dr. Doug? Fuck Dr. Doug. I agree. I just didn't know if you felt badly about he it. He actually owes my family lots of money because okay. my mother ho- like paid for him business to open up. So I think he even had a stroke. I have no idea. So you never followed up no. with him? Didn't know if he did he ever marry that either. girl? Wait, <laughs> how did she... But when did she realize... That it was with her or her good friend and bridesmaid. Oh well, she well yeah. I mean, he comes home and she he and he tells her <gasps> who it is. Yes. Oh. And and Did the, she ever the bridesmaid's the husband had just died from a, a train in the middle of like the <laughs> desert. You know. What do you mean a train? So, he walked in front of the train tracks. Yeah, you know how there's like you drive in the middle of Havasu and there's like a train. train so did he in his car or or he was walking he across? Must have, I think he was working on the. I don't know. You know, it's probably something else. But I was told it was the train. Okay. And um, so he, so Doug. Did they ever end up together? No. Okay. Who? The Dr. Doug and the bridesmaid. Okay. No. So. Did she keep the bridesmaid's dress? Did she get rid of the wedding photos? Probably. Okay. Oh, my mom. Yeah, she was done with him. The moment she realized, yeah, done. Uh, Goodbye. We don't need you. So she, so you guys go to Topanga. And AJ, yes. my brother, yes. was just starting to, like, my mom would take him out here for auditions. Oh, and he so was starting to act. He was, he basically books this American Family television show. And it all kind of happened just, AJ was living out here on his own in Studio City and doing, you know, this this television show, and my mom was visiting him every once in a while. And so when that happened, my mom's like, we're going to AJ. Oh, so, okay, wait. So AJ was already over here when Doug cheated. Yes. So it was you and Dakota that got pulled out of school. No, no, no. AJ and I got pulled out of school, but in that time frame, oh, AJ he booked a job. was booking a job. Oh, so I he see. was coming out here got it. Okay. every, you know, but my mom wasn't sure if she wanted to let him completely leave got high it. school and start his Acting. career. Yeah. So he just had a role, but it was like a working role. You know, they, they would put him in and... Like a recurring they, guest. Right. Okay. So when that all happened, it was like, well, you know what? Might as well. AJ, you wanted... This is what you want to do. I didn't... I mean, the moment I graduated high school, I was planning on getting the fuck out of there, too. Oh, so yeah. I was down. Yeah. Like, let's move out of here. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was my sister, Dakota, that got this... She got all screwed up a yeah. bit because she was what? She was in fifth grade or something? Oh, okay. So, you know, so then we're all out here and, now. And, and Dr. Doug 
Oh, no, Dr. Doug was her dog. Corvette Craig was. Okay, yeah. so con- continue. So now you're moving out. Now you're here. So now we're here. You get a house in Topanga on, in Woodland Hills. And Right. And so then my mom now starts to kind of regress as okay. far as like, it's like almost like she moved out here. AJ now had his own apartment and working. I was going to high school at El Camino driving, mm-hmm. you know, and Dakota was at... Um, Oh, my gosh. The elementary school. I can't. I don't know what it was. Yeah. And she was taking it. So, basically, she just, it's like the mother that I had just kind of was like, you know, Checked I'm out. done now. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm single now. I want to get back into publicists and, you know what I mean? So, she would try realizing, like, trying to get back in her job 10, 15 years later is a bit more difficult than she imagined. And so she was just spending money out here, you know, because we came from Havasu where we didn't have a Target. Like, you know what I mean? I knew what Louis Vuitton was and things like that because my mom owned the stuff, but it's not like Havasu was. So when we all came out here, it was just like, oh. Like, like that Nordstrom was just where it's oh at. Oh my gosh! Yes, absolutely. It was like this is where I should be. You know what I mean? Like finally, I am home, and so the money is being spent. You know, and and my mom is just living her life. Meets another Craig Corvette, but we're talking a broke ass Craig Corvette. Okay. Okay. Which both Craig Corvettes are now broke. Okay. okay. Obviously, they're. Fun adventures yeah. ended them, you know, and yeah. So she then now is visiting Craig Corvette too in yeah. in uh, Simi Valley. Mm. Yeah, and and you know I don't know what went on out there, but so they're ripping it. I caught my mom. Yeah, I caught. I went into my mother's room, and I was in high school. My sister was now going out. The Dakota, at, little yeah, Dakota? Yeah, like 12 years old. And I was like, I just came from high school where now I have no friends. My life is just, so yeah. all I'm doing is going to high school, coming home. Dakota's going out, like out and about, like all this stuff where, you know, all my friends are back in Arizona still. Right. And so it's just, we all kind of, AJ was stopping by every once in a while, like, how are you guys doing? You know, and then my dad's in Malibu about to go through a divorce with Shauna One. Okay, so Shauna One is the fourth wife. Or is she the third? She's the third. Wait. Fourth. Okay, so she's the fourth wife. and, And with Shauna One, he had a few children with her. Yes, three children. Okay. So they are at this point. You know what's crazy? What? This is really like I just. Re- I have a cousin, Peter. Remember my my cousins, the nice family that lives in Elisa v- Vallejo. Yeah, Vallejo? Elisa Vallejo. Wait, yeah. They um, they knew her. They went to that wedding. Really? Yes. <laughs> Which wait in New York? Whatever that they knew that Shauna girl, like like either my cousin, because my cousin was more like my aunt, but whatever. I just remember her being that is like odd. it was. What was her last name? Sands. Yes, Shauna Sands. Yes. So yes, because she was really thin, oh, had yeah. like the big boobs. Still, still, and it was like either they knew her mom or something, but they went to that wedding. Oh my, that's yes. random. I know. I was a flower girl at that wedding. <laughs> The only child to be at any of his weddings, actually, to, to this date. I pride myself on that. So they have a few kids, but now they're breaking up. So they have a few kids. Huge house here off of, you know, um, the in the valley here. And I walk in. So this is all kind of unfolding. I walk in on my mother, and I go to, like, steal her makeup or something, like, you know. and yeah. And there's this plate. And a little straw thing and powder. And like, I had never done drugs, but I know what drugs look like. And at that point, I'm like 15, 16. My mom is still getting $5,000 because of, for child support. Okay. So she just. She's getting 5000 from Doug? No. No. From, from which Lorenzo. one? Lorenzo. Oh, from Lorenzo. Because okay. AJ's already now. Okay, so she's getting money for you. Right. Okay. So age is already now 18. That's done. Right? Okay. So now she's just living off of my child support. Okay. So it's like, I knew I had that upper hand in the back of my mind that 
She's living off of me, basically, because it's, you know what I because, mean? Cr- because Craig is Dakota's dad, and he has no oh, money. Oh, he's a piece of shit. Okay, got so, it. So, and just, like, never was around. Dakota yeah. was at the window, you know, waiting for her oh, father her yeah. whole childhood. Yeah. While AJ and I were with our dad at Disneyland, yeah. you know, VIP, living yeah. the life. Right. So, but... It does. I mean, my sister has no excuses because right. she's been around it, seen it, done it. She has no excuses for. I understand people say like, "Oh, well, her childhood and blah blah blah," but when you are aware of things and then you choose to go into that world, that's your fault. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you cannot blame your childhood your whole life. So, anyways. Um, so you see the so cocaine. I say, and I asked my mother, what is this? And and she goes, it's diet pills crushed up. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not an idiot. And I go like this, and I put it here, and I go, oh, really, Mom? And I'm like, oh, this is disgusting. And I told her if I ever saw this again, I was moving out to live with my father. Which would take the five grand away. Which would take the five grand away. So I saw it again another week. I go to my dad, and I sit him down, and I tell him, and he goes, daughter, why don't you move in with me? Because I'm about to divorce Shauna. And I have three children, ages one, two, and four. And could you use a sitter. Come help out. I could use you. So I'm about to tell Shauna that I want a divorce, but I'm planning on moving all of us out to Malibu. So come live with me in Malibu. You can have your child support every month. In your own account, I'll buy, you know what I mean? I'll buy you your own car. So it's like, absolutely done. Sign me up, right? I was, oh my God, how, 16, 17, and this sounded brilliant. And then it's like, and then I could like, live Barbie. with my dad. You're Malibu you know? Barbie, but you're more like Skipper the nanny. Right. Yeah. Right. But here's the thing. I then said, but you're going to have a nanny, right? And so it was the nanny and me and my okay. dad. So, Because my dad was then doing every movie under the sun, like snakes eat their heads off, yeah, you know, yeah. in Bulgaria. B movies, yeah. So, oh, international. Yeah, international so movies. he was gone, right? right? So we had like a house market credit account, like where you could go to this grocery store in and, Malibu. And they that would is just charge just you, yeah. a, Like the... Tr- the prices are just, I mean, ridiculous. Yeah. But I'd buy everything. Like, I was, I had a Chevron gas card. Like, I was getting my money put into my account, you know, and nobody, like, taught me about finances or anything. Like, I was just living while my mom was just not. So now, how is your mom going to pay the rent when she's got a coke right. habit? But that was not my problem. Right. Was but, that? but what about Dakota? So then Dakota ends up moving in with me. Oh, okay. Okay. So and she's so, now living I've with... Because I've always taken Dakota under my yes. wing. Like, yeah. just, I just have, you know? Yeah. And, and and that's just, we've been sisters. This right. is my sister. And she's being left at home, you know, to spend for herself and dinner. And, like, she's going to come. So she, it was like a party. So I went to Malibu High. Dakota then transitions to, like, a homeschooling program where she just shows up, with, you know, once a week to check in with somebody. And um, I'm living, living my life. And my dad, but here's, I do want to mention this. My father is so funny because, so he goes, we're all in the car, my dad, Shauna, and the girls. And he decides to tell Shauna he wants a divorce in front of me. Uh, You know, it was just very appropriate of my dad. (laughs) And he goes, you know, I want a divorce. And she's like holding Krispy Kreme donuts like I'll never forget and she looks at me and she's like what did you have anything to do with this you know and I'm like what like you know like why what? did he want to divorce her did he ever tell you oh because she's bad shit okay like I must admit absolutely okay she's a smart woman but okay. okay she's somebody you look at and you go okay I understand like everything you would think she is she is okay and so my father my father ends up having full custody of my children or oh, of my well, sisters. Basically, it was your children. So yeah. I grew up with my little like sisters in the back of my BMW oh, when girls? I was going tanning. You all know three what I mean? are girls. All three okay. are girls. Yeah, me and the nanny and and what have you. So then I I 
hit 18, and my dad is now engaged to Barbara. Oh, okay. Who says she's got to kind of, you know, hit the payment. But Barbara and my father never married because the night before the wedding, he caught her, like, sniffing cocaine off of a stripper's body. And he was like, okay. Wait, hold on. We're not going to do that. So, wait, what? where did Barbara come from? She's an actress, so too? or Barbara what is, she... is an actress. Barbara is and, yeah, and in they, that field. And we'll, so, was she, they were, like, at a strip club the night before the wedding no, having fun? No, and she, thought? yeah, she was having her, like, bachelorette okay. party. And how did he catch her then? And he caught her because she wasn't picking up. And oh. we had our whole family in from New York staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel. For the fifth wedding. Yes, Beverly's Hotel, huge wedding, food paid for. Were you going to be in this one? Yes, okay. absolutely. So you Beautiful had a dress. dress. Yeah. And my grandmother is, the, like, everyone is there for the wedding. This is the night before. Yes. And he pulls the plug. He pulls the How plug. How many times has your dad been featured in People Magazine for weddings? Oh, my gosh. He should probably I feel like have I've seen everyone. A, an exclusive. And so, so the, he pulls the plug. He pulls the plug on Barbara. Yeah. Okay. And he tells all of us, you know, unfortunately, that's just not going to gonna pan out. Okay. So then after Barbara, he was kind of single for a while. And then, so here is me, graduated. Um, and it for me, it was either college, which I don't even know where I would go. Yeah. Or Hollywood, because I was... I had um, a contract role for General Hospital. Oh, and so, awesome. So you had an agent. You were going out right. for things. So okay. I was like studied all my life. Like you name it, I've been to that school because my dad always said, you you know, you have to prove yourself. And that is so true. Because and soap operas, you have so much um, so much dialogue to memorize oh every night. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So it's like training. It, the best training you can have is is if you book a soap opera first. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. it is hard work. Right. And my father, you know, I, he'll always, he'll admit it and I'll admit it. I mean, the name, it didn't help me. It didn't help me at all. Maybe it got me in the door because people, Out of curiosity. Right, yes. curiosity. But I, I had to prove the goods. Right, of course. And back then, it was so different. No one's going to get... I always say that about those things. Like, yes, you can maybe get an agent. You can even maybe get an audition, but no one's going to give you the job unless you're right for the right, job. You right. got to be right Absolutely. for the part. You got to be able to do the job. So. And so you can't embarrass yourself. Yeah. And so if you're going out, and back then it was like, if you're going out for a role, you you know, like just because you have a name, like you can't embarrass yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's word about. So here I choose General Hospital. I move into my own apartment at Sweetser in, in Hollywood. And, um, you know, I start my life off and um, I kind of go through my career a little bit. General Hospital did a little parts here. Like you're almost I call it paying dues. Yeah. So as an actress, you kind of like start off just like obviously auditions, 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 all day long auditions, driving, you know, hoping to get that one part on CW or whatever. Yeah. And so I kind of did a little bit of that. So I was. uh this will kind of segue into wrapping up yeah. my adulthood because it was Gossip Girls, okay? So it was between Blake Lively and myself. And it was like, because, like, after going in, going in, the casting directors come to know you. Right. So you almost, you just start moving up the list, right? right? And when they're looking for that type, it's like, you get crossed off, okay, she's, so... I was pretty much right, like, it was time for me to hit a series regular, right. like, I was right there. And when I lost out to Blake, who absolutely, that is her role 100%. I mean, these things are all meant to be. Right. The writer's strike happens. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know, but the writer's strike, I'm sure you remember, it was the Hollywood was this, stopped. Was this the 2007 writer's yes. strike? Yes, because that's right when I started Chelsea Lately, oh, which was not right, a Writers right. Guild show, right. though I was in Writers Guild, but you know, you can do a show. And I, rem and I really think that really helped our show gain an audience. You're so right. Because there was nothing else to watch, but Absolute, we were able to have our show. Absolutely, fresh content every yeah. night. You are very, very yeah. correct on that. So. That is so funny. So, ba yes, because basically we were, it was like the COVID pandemic for Hollywood. Yes. Everybody went black. Yes. And um, 
literally, it was the most depressing time. I mean, weeks and weeks of no auditions, nothing. Like, and I'm just, uh, I was just this close, right, to... Blown up. And I am walking around the Grove, and somebody approaches me and hands me a card. And I look at the card, and it says, ABC The Bachelor, uh, casting agent. And I, I was like, oh, thank you. You know, and I threw, she's like, by the way, are you single? And I'm like, yes, I'm single, but I'm sorry. I love the show, but I'm an actress. I can't do reality. You know what I mean? Because yeah. back in that time, it was like, oh, my God. If you did reality and acting, you were, like, X'd out. Right. Of, like, blacklisted. Yeah. And we just looked at that as... That. Lowbrow, kind of. Yes. Or not professional. Absolutely. Yeah. Not professional. It's not the art. Right. Yes. It's like, you know, I mean, I'm used to, and even so now, like, I'm used to speaking to press about a project, not yeah. my life. You know what right. I mean? Right, yeah. Like, that's just how I grew up, how I was trained. My mother was a publicist. It's just like, this is, so anyways, I laughed in her face. Okay, and so wait. Okay, so you laughed at her face. You continue to walk around the grove and enjoy the fountains. And and this, yes. <laughs> and you're like, I'm not doing The Bachelor. No, and I'm with two of my girlfriends who are also, we're all just out of work. Yeah, they didn't want them though? No, I mean, they she, they weren't after her, yeah. after them. And so she kept following me around and she's like, let me just ask you. She was very persistent. Okay. Are you single? And I'm like, absolutely, yes, I'm single. Why would you not want to go and meet the most fabulous bachelor in the world? <laughs> and I was like, you have to think, like, after being in the writer's strike, nothing going on. Like, it's just like, it almost became like, this might be just fun thing yeah. to go and do. I also loved The Bachelor. Like, yes. that was my show. Right. right. Because, like, I just, everything about it. And so... I'm like, well, if I'm going to meet a bachelor, might as well ABC hook me up with one. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, maybe. And so I I thought about it. She, They send me this, con, like, this to fill out. It's like this thick. A questionnaire No kind way. Of. Not doing it. I fly off to Hawaii. They are calling me on my phone, asking me to go get tested in Hawaii because... For STDs? Yes, for okay. STDs. And I'm like... I'm in Hawaii. Oh, we we had a bachelor who lived in Hawaii. We have a testing center. We can send. I mean, they picked. They sent a car to my hotel. And at this point, I am like picking up my phone. Like, you want to do what? Okay, fine. If you get it, you know, a, a car here, I'll go run over there. Like, I was just whatever. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like I was even trying. Yeah. It was like they were. They really needed me. Yeah. Really. And um. And so push comes to shove, I get approved to go on like in three days when these women have been pining dealing, away yeah. pine, for a year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this whole progress, like being cut and da da da. So I arrived to this hotel. Yeah. You know, I decided to do it, stayed up one night, just filled it all out. Bull, bull, you know, they give me like a psych test, you know, to make yeah. sure I'm not crazy. And I just pack a bunch of dresses. My mom gives me dresses, and I just go. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Might as well figure out what re you know reality is all about and how it works and behind the scenes. Like I, in my mind, there was a lot of reasons. You right. know what I mean? Like I could take this experience, and and why not? I was 21. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, oh man. So we were. Who was the bachelor? I don't remember. Who was it? Exactly. So we arrive to the hotel. Yeah. They take your phone away. Okay. Yeah. No contact, nothing. And so I'm starting to realize, like, oh, God, you know, like, this is not, this yeah. is like. They, not a regular acting no, gig. No, this yeah. is not a regular, like, cut, I'm going to go to my trailer and do my thing. This yeah. is like, you are staying, you have, like, a person that, like, watches over you and, like, yes. stays. So. Anyways, they like send a girl home because I come in, you know, and, and they didn't send her home until they found my herpes test came in. So, and this is also, I found out after. So I'm at the hotel and they're waiting on the clearance of my herpes test to send this other girl home, right? 
So my herpes test apparently comes in. Negative. And ne- right? Lucky and you. so they send that chick home. Yeah. But could you imagine, like, we have Shane Lamas's, you know, herpes test. She's a good. She's good to go. Good to go. Get Clean rid. as a whistle. Send her back to Ohio, that other one in room 23B. You know, like, I remember getting the phone call, like, hello, uh, Miss Lamas. This is the nurse. I just want to let you know you're, you're clean. I'm like, yeah. Okay, cool. Like, I had no idea it was all on, like, a hinge, like, waiting for that. You know, because they don't tell you. They're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. we need you. Come on, you're done. So you're thinking this whole time, like, you're in, just like that other lady. Right. But, you know, TV. You never know you're in until But if you had the herps, they'd say goodbye. Yeah, so apparently that was, you know. Okay. So I passed that test. And here and we are. And then you start from the beginning, like walk out of the limo. Oh, yeah. They sprayed the water on the driveway right no, before you walked. No, it was raining. Oh, they didn't have to do that. that they time. didn't have to do they do that. Yeah, so it's always glistening. Oh, my God. So I am in this limo with a bunch of crazies. Okay. okay? And I'm starting to, it's starting to sink in, like, what I've done to myself. Yeah. A, I'm thinking I have to live with these people. Right, in that mansion, yeah. Okay. B, I have to somehow, like, make this guy like me and not this slut that has her underwear in her pocket ready to hand him when she gets out of the limo. You know what I mean? And you know, it's like she got eaten by a producer. Obviously, you know, they fill. Yeah. You know, producers know who they can produce and who to stay the fuck away from. Right. And I was that. She knows the drill. Don't bother her. You know what I mean? And, um... So you walk out, and who is the guy? I remember looking out and being like, oh, my God, can I run now? Oh. And I was I was thinking about just, like, just pulling it. Like, I can't do this. He was tall, and, uh, and it was raining, and I'm just like, oh, my God. You know, because you're just like, okay, at this point, now I have to just focus on winning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm not going to be sent home. I can't be sent home. You don't do a show like that and then be sent home. Right. How embarrassing. I'm already taking my career and throwing it over my shoulder. Yeah. Let's not ruin my reputation or who I am. Right. You know, like, this is terrible. And so I walk up and, you know, they had the super, like, my hair was blowing in the wind and, you know, whenever you're the winner or the last one, your storyline from the beginning looks royal. Yeah. You know? So they will make you, no matter what, they will make you look good. Yes. You know, the the last two or three. Right. You guys will kind of all look best right. when there's the crazies. And then, so, you know, I knew that. And so it's just like, okay. So I was there at that point. I met Matt and he's from... He goes, you know, some accent. He goes, I go, oh, you have an accent. He goes, yes, do you know where I'm from? And I was so nervous in my mind because I don't know accents. I don't even know countries, barely. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) is London in Like, I do, but do you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, gosh, I don't know London. He's like, that's crocked, or however Londoners talk. And I was just like, (laughs) fuck ABC, man. They give me a fucking ba- like bachelor who doesn't even live here. You know what I mean? Like, who is this guy? And, you know, he's supposedly the best bachelor they've had. But yet, the, the bachelor prior to Matt was the one that didn't choose anyone. So oh, okay. the bachelor fan base, like, they striked on yeah. my season. So no, like, it was like my season went flying under the radar because it was on strike because... The Bachelor fans were not having another Bachelor because Brad had just not chosen anyone. Got it. I remember that. So yeah. it wasn't. So thank God. I mean, my kind of season flew under. I watched it. Oh, really? I to- I totally remember you because I remember. I just like. I love that you have such dark brown eyes and blonde hair. It's just like a look I love. So I just remember thinking, and I knew you. You know, I knew who your dad yes, was, and yes. they, you know, revealed it. And I mean, I don't remember great details. I just remember that you. That you wanted in the yes, end. Yes, yes. So when you, yes. so when you're doing the whole thing, like, you know, so did you start to fall for him on all these dates? So I will say, once I kind of settled in, and I was like, you know, at the end of the day, you can do an interview with me, and I'm able to speak to you normally because I'm used to cameras and this and that. Like, 
a lot of people get intimidated or get produced or, you know, and they're not themselves. So when you're in front of the camera with, a, you know, trying to get to know somebody and there's a camera in your face, like, I'm a soap opera actress, true and tried trained. I can totally act like that is not there. Oh, right. And yeah. just have a conversation and make him in turn feel comfortable because he's uncomfortable as right, well, yeah. you know? And so I will admit that I feel like I had that in, you know, and on my favor and right. I didn't drink or get drunk or be yeah. crazy, obviously. And so when you're in this so bubble. So did you like go to London and meet his family and do the whole y- thing? Yes. Yes. So when you're in this bubble and this is all you're focused on because everything else is wiped away. Yes. You, you, you almost, you start to become like, you like him. Yeah. Because it's and all you have to look forward and you, to, right? Yeah, and then you have all these people that are, like, just want his attention. So then it becomes, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, what? it's, it's kind of empowering. And so I fought from that first day that I was just here for my career. Because, you know, it said actress. Shane Lamas, actress, right? Yeah. And that's what I am. But I wanted to let him know from the start, I am definitely not here for my career. Let's make that very I'm here for the right reason. Very clear. Right. I'm here for to actually meet you. And these crazy bitches from Michigan are not. Okay? They they want to be famous. And that is exactly how it basically I mean, down to the final few, he weeded out all of them. But that is all. All okay, so you wait. see okay, so now it's on the, there okay, so it's the, are people that just want to be famous. So it's the fantasy suites. So yes. that's between you and two other girls. Yes. So you have to bone better than the two other girls. Yes. And I told them I need, I need the last date. Okay. And he, my mom you know, always said like that you always want to be last, like ice skating, gymnastics, right. and, and the bachelorette bone. Yeah. But it, I'm trying to think if we had sex or not. Because at that point, you hadn't been touched in, like, five months from any man. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, you're almost just like, so horny. just touch me. Yeah. Kiss me, you know. And I, I, I do want to say we did, and that was interesting, but we won't get into that. Okay. Because he's from London, so they do things differently down there. Okay. <laughs> and I... I you mean almost, like uncircumcised? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then so, you know, obviously you wear protection and that yeah. and what have you. Anyways, he, he chose me, clearly. Okay. And so when when so now it goes down to the two. Yeah. And does he meet your family? Yes, he meets my mom. Okay. And then my dad. So my dad, yeah, he met everyone. Yeah. My he we lived in Toluca Lake at the time my mom did, a beautiful house. Yeah. They came, my mom cooked, she showed him pictures of, you know, pageants, and they watched videos, the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. And what did they think? Did they, did you, at this point, My, my sister, Dakota, she's looking at me, like, trying to secretly talk to me with the eyes, because they won't let you, like, alone, you know what I mean? Right. She's just, like, trying to, like, get, like, is this real, Shane? What the fuck are you doing? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What is, like, are you going to get married, really? Like... And I would, you know, I was just. And what like, were you thinking? That you really I, might get married? Like, they, you... I think. I don't know. To be honest, I think I was just. I mean, I was young, and you're swept up in this fantasy world, and then reality hits where ABC. All right, he's all yours now. And we go to Sushi Dan for our first dinner, and he asks me to split the bill because wait, hold he on, has wait, no stop. money. So, so wait, you do the engagement, you do get engaged. Yes, he asked and you me get to marry. Your, and you get your Neil Lane ring. No, to Corey at the time. And did you like the ring? Uh, no, I mean, it wasn't anything spectacular. Okay, so now you're engaged. Yes. And you are thinking when when you go, we're engaged, you know, the last Oh, yeah, thing. absolutely. Like, I come home, he back, goes back to London. But back then, they didn't have, like, the live audience and After the Rose and yes, all that stuff. Yes, they did. Oh, they did. Yes. And so you're sitting there with Chris Harrison. I'll tell you. Yeah, rest but, in peace. No, um, just kidding. Yeah. No. Um, so I you're know. with Chris Harrison, and you, you, you know, have that moment. Oh, yes, but that, we had already been broken up by then. Oh, so, by then, you already broken up. Okay. Oh, I'm, okay. T- I'm telling you, like, no, like, 
okay, when it so the airs, ring, you get the ring, get the ring, get the ring. So now he's Mike's flying, come off. Mike's come off. He's going back to London, Got and it. I'm going back to LA. And now we have to keep a secret for cool. the season to air. And how many months are you keeping a secret? And it wasn't that. It was like right away it aired, and okay. so it was like two months. Okay. So. We're talking via London, and it's like nighttime there right now. So there was just it was just total like very hard, you know, because I missed him, and we wanted to be. So ABC set up like three secret date rendezvous where he would fly in, they would take him to a house in Palm Springs, and then somebody would drive me from here to Palm Springs, and we would sit in the house for two days, and we had little people to go out and get what we needed, and that was like two or three. Those were always. Just a nightmare. Why? Because you're getting to know who you're marrying, and you're like, what is going on? Like, I remember being in the kitchen, and this was airing. So you're also picking fights. Like, why Wait, did Wait, they're you... filming you in the little house, too? No, no, no. Oh. The show oh, is oh, airing. Why you're... Oh, so you're right. right. Why did you like that girl? So he's, like, yeah. prepping me. So tonight, you know, on the episode, like, I just have to warn... You know what I yeah. mean? And then we get into a fight, and it's like, I'm stuck in the house with him. <laughs> You know what I mean? And it's just like, oh my God. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, what did I, I think back, like, what did I get myself into? But then again, I get myself into a lot of things. Um, okay, so then, so, so how do you break up with so them? So it's, but it's still are almost you boning, like a facade. Are you though, boning in because, Palm Springs? Yes. Okay. But it's still almost like a facade because it's still, they're putting you in this nice house and so it's like, fake. Yeah. It's not fake right. real life. So then when real life happens, so when the finale airs, yes, literally he was, and meanwhile, I'm back here prepping for our life together. I move into the Archlight, get our own apartment because I was living with Dakota at the time. Yeah. And I move out and I, you know, and I fund all of this thinking... I don't know why I wouldn't bring up financial situations, but you know, and he was a banker. So my family had lined up jobs. My family in New York had lined up some jobs out here in the banking because they're not in yeah. this world. They're more of in that world. Yeah. And so all these things and slowly but surely I started to realize that he was not planning on having a banking job. Um, first of all, he was like teller at a bank. And so there's that. But that he was just wanting to be an actor. Um, I remember being in the kitchen in my house, and he picked up a, a spatula. And he goes, you know, I have a great idea. And I, I said, what? I'm going to turn this into a bachelor. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, could you imagine? So he was so full of himself because ABC blows you up. You know, like, he was so full of himself, he thought he was going to be the next star. Okay? Okay. But reality hits, like, wake up, they're done with you, honey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know. So they didn't, did either of you get asked to do Dancing with the Stars? Okay, so <laughs> I love how that's what you're thinking. Because you said they're done what? with you, and I'm like, I feel like they're not always done with you, though. But that's a whole different production and people, you know, like. Yeah, but you know what I mean. They're not ever done with you. So he so he look he's reflect looking at his beautiful reflection in the spatula, and that's when you yes, realize I'm like, I don't think he wants to I be a banker. I realized it when he said, you know, I said, "What do you want?" He's like, "I fancy some beef," and I'm like, "Okay, we don't have beef for it. Like, what it what what?" And he was just very like, "I'm like, why don't you go out and get something?" And he sits me down, tells me he has he has no money. And so I just pulled out the entire story out of him. I'm like, I need to know, where did they find you? Well, how did this come about? Like, I was, like, pissed. I was like, I'm calling fucking Mike Fleiss, and I'm going to have a very long conversation with this person because I have been ripped off and, like, totally, like, guilt-tripped into doing this to meet this fabulous, well-off bachelor who lives with his parents in London, who's not even a banker, he's a teller, who they found in a nightclub in London. They redid his teeth. Oh, the whole bit. I was like, you gotta go. No, no, no. I was like, you could stay here for a few weeks while you figure out where you're gonna go. And during that few weeks, he was, like, out on dates. Like, I have a good friend, JT Tertana. He owns a few restaurants. At the time, it was, like, Bay. So JT calls me. He's like, hey, so you're... And we're still, like, publicly, you know what I mean? 
because he wants to soak that up. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And we still have the final rose to film. Okay. And so I catch Matt. So JT calls me. He's like, hey, so your boy Matt is down here, your fiance? I'm like, yeah, with a woman. I was like, oh, really? And he's like, and Matt told me he was just going out. Like, we weren't. I was done with him. Yeah. But, like, you know, we had to, like, figure out what we were going to do, right? You but he's, tell the not, world. he's now yeah. out in L.A. with, like, some age. So I drive down there in my Ugg boots. JT lets me in through the kitchen, like, the back. And JT goes, he, they just ordered martinis. And so he hands me the plate of the m- drinks. I'm like, well, I've never been a waitress. But, you know. Let's give it a try. And so I walk out. My, imagine, like, my Ugg boots. Like, I'm hair. You know what I mean? Just L.A., whatever. And I'm like, here you go. And here you go. And I go, get your shit and move out tonight. We are done. How dare you? Like, because I just thought, like. So he's having drinks with this girl. And she knows who he is because she's been watching the whole season right, of Bachelor right, too. Right. And, oh, hi. Shane, oh hi, yes. How, how are you? Like, so she was just somebody trying to get starfucked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. So it's just like, but to me, like, you are even worse than I thought. You yes, were. so you know much I mean? worse. And I was so upset. So we agreed to fake that everything is great. Yes. On the final rose, because I just didn't want to deal with the drama and the tabloids like I am so not somebody that did this so my private life would be out there yeah so I was like we'll do the final rose and then we'll just quietly fade away you know what I mean and so he wanted they offered us to do the a wedding and he like called me to some pub London pub Irish pub sat me down it's like they're gonna they're willing to pay us a million dollars and I'm like I am not marrying you for five million. No. Like, you know what I mean? So he was always trying to wheel me back in. Yeah. And so we did the final rose. It was, you know, all fake and we pulled so it you off. You act like a couple on the final uh-huh. rose. Okay. Yeah. But then after that, he leaves. Yeah. You know, moves out. And I'm just out about living my life normally. And paparazzi catch me like in the Bahamas or something, you know, and, and that. The, I cheated or he, whatever. It was like, it came out and I just didn't even respond. Quote, nothing. He was back in London, obviously wasn't as successful as an actor as he thought he would be. And it just kind of died. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, we have to do a part two. I feel like we're going to do a part two because we haven't even gotten to your infamous infamous night in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. When you really did get married. When I really did get married. So we're going to... Ten years later, here we are. So we're going to continue that on Tuesday's show. So here we go. Well, you guys, I mean, Shane just left. The rest of it is going to be on Tuesday, and it's even juicier and crazier. It answers a lot of the questions you had about her soon-to-be ex-husband and even more. Um, Unfortunately, I couldn't get to all my hot topics that I normally like to get to. So it is all going to be on Patreon. Up tomorrow, I'm going to record it before I take my baby boy to college, which I'll be sharing also um, more of that experience later on in the weekend on Patreon as well. So go over to Heather McDonald. Net, join Patreon. Also, make sure you get your tickets, you guys. Bravo, Cal- Bravo Con was canceled, as you know, in New York. I am so glad that I had committed to performing that week on October 15th and 16th in Chicago. We have three shows. I honestly don't know how many tickets are left, but I know there's some. Please go over, make your girls' weekend then. It's Heather Con. All of my upcoming dates. Um, are at heathermcdonald.net. So make sure you go there. Join Patreon for all the hot topics and super juice. Change your life. Thank you.